Okay, let's continue. Let's go over the characteristics and load line analysis. So in this case, we are asked to do a load line of a circuit with a, with, that has a voltage source with two volts. And then we have a resistor that is one kilo ohm. And then we have a diode. Right? Now, based on what we learned in the introduction, if we were asked to calculate this current right, through the circuit, we could use the different approximations. If we, since the voltage here is going to be larger than the voltage at the cathode, the diode is conductor, so conducting. Therefore, if you assume for quick analysis that that's a short, the current will be 2 volts over 1K or 1 milliamp. Now, this voltage is very small. It's close to a 0 0.7 volt, so to speak. So that introduces an error. So it would be better to do 2 volts minus 0 0.7 volts, 1.3 volts, divided by 1K. Okay. But in this activity, what we are asked is to do a load line analysis. So let's do that. We're going to look at the voltages in the circuit and the currents. And the first thing that we're going to do is the maximum current and the maximum voltage that you have in this circuit when you take out the actual device, the nonlinear device. So what you can see is in step one, we can assume that the device is a short and that will give us the maximum current or it's a short two volts one kilo ohm right so this is the voltage across the device in this case is zero for voltage across the device equal to zero we get a current which is two volts so two minus zero two over one k and this is this point here, right here, right, at the origin. So there is no difference in potential across the diode. That gives you the maximum current, which is, in this case, we have 2 milliamps. And so we will plot it right here. This here is the BVV over R, the voltage source, 2 volts over... 1 kilo ohms equals 2 milliamps. That's the maximum current that can flow through the circuit right there. Now, we can also look at what is the maximum voltage that we can have across the diode, right? And that's going to happen if the diode was an open, right? In that case, will have no current flowing so this current will be zero so this will be this point right here and what will be the voltage that we have across the diode now with no current drop from so here we have two volts if we have no current volts here we have two volts if we assume that this is ground it will be two volts so i'm going to plot that right here two volts now Notice that this is an extern is external to the circuit, right? It's, it is determined by the, the voltage sources and the resistors that you have here. And then you are looking at the closed circuit and open circuit for your nonlinear device. So we found a point with the maximum current and the point with the maximum voltage, which is for zero current. And if you join that, you get this load line, which you can plot against the current voltage characteristics of the diode in our more complex approximation, the fourth order or the exponential model. That, if you recall, was something like this.
right? These are the bolt, current voltage characteristics for a diode that is in the forward bias, which in this case, since the anode is more positive than the cathode, it is the case. Remember, this is going to be the, con the new voltage, it's around 0 0.7 volts for silicon diodes, 0 0.3 volts for germanium diodes. And this intersection right here, which you could do it, um, by solving these two equations, gives you the exact value for the current and the exact value for the voltage, which either you can solve it by equating them or doing iterative analysis. This is also what we call the Q point, the quiescent point, the operating point, or quiescent by at rest of the circuit. Now, let's make a couple of remarks here. So, let me annotate here. This is the diode IV characteristics. This is the Q point, okay, also known as the operating point or the quiescent point. This line for the maximum current that can flow through that circuit to the maximum open circuit voltage that, that the device can experience is the load line or the line of current voltages that are possible with that external circuit. You should know that this current voltage characteristic for the diode is a function of temperature, so it could be that it starts conducting a little bit earlier, right? It has a negative temp a temperature coefficient, minus two millivolts per degree Celsius or Kelvin, so it conducts more or starts conducting earlier um, as the temperature increases. And these load lines, another remark that we should make, remember they are a function of the external circuit and that's why we are asking, okay, let's do it for 1K. What about if you do it for 10K? If you do it for 10K, these changes, instead of having two milliamps, we'll have two volts divided by 10K, so 0.2 milliamps, so it will be maybe right here. Same voltage though. That will tell you they will operate here, it will operate slightly less. Again, always very close to the 0 0.7 volts, and that's why the second order model is a pretty good approximation. Or for 20, it would be two volts over 20 kilo ohms, right? 0.1 milliamps. Okay. Now you wanna do exact analysis, you can use a load line analysis to establish the key SM point. When you do a PS by simulation and you are trying first determine the VC voltages and currents throughout the circuit, what you are doing is an, that OP, that operating point or that Q point analysis, establishing the key SM point. Notice that if you are to analyze the circuit based on the models that we have in the first model, remember, this will be two volts over a one kilo ohms, and then this is a short. So we say that the current that goes through the circuit is two volts over one kilo ohm equals to two milliamps. In the second model, we'll say one kilo ohms, and we have a voltage drop here of 0 0.7 volts. So it will be, to establish the current, it will be two volts minus 0 0.7 divided by one kilo ohm. or 1.3 milliamps. Now this is already quite accurate. 
remember, if this voltage is in the order of 0.7 volts, I mean, as this voltage increases, if we had a 20 volts here, then our first order model is justified, perhaps, depending on the application. Remember, whether you use which model you use is going to depend on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do just a quick mental analysis, the first order model may be fine. If you want to do circuit analysis, probably, typically, you're going to be working with this model. If you want to be more accurate, you can add a resistor. If you want to be very accurate, you can do a load analysis, equate these two equations and establish exactly what is the key asset point, or you can do an iterative analysis. Thank you.